Recently, Shabir Ali posted a video about the transmission of the Quran. Today, most Muslims read the Quran in a text that is referred to as the Egyptian edition of 1924. That's how scholars refer to it. Most Muslims may not have realized that this is the designation for that manuscript, for, for, for that text to, to, to Muslims in general. This is just simply the Quran. But this is not the only text of the Quran that is read uh, throughout the world. Uh, in North Africa, there is a slightly different text uh, that is uh, based on a slightly different reading. And then too, uh, in some parts of Africa, uh, there uh, is another reading of the Quran and a matching manuscript that is uh, prevalent. And here too, we find some slight variations uh, that do not affect uh, Muslim beliefs uh, and, and do not ex affect Muslim practices in any significant uh, degree. Ralph Cravey, who brought this video to my attention, comments, He is saying essentially the same thing about the Quran that we say about the Bible. He says that the textual variants in the Qurans do not affect any core Islamic beliefs. We Christians say the same thing about the textual variants in the Bible manuscripts. It's not only what Christians say about the Bible, it's even what Muslims' favorite and, in most cases, only New Testament scholar says as well. In Misquoting Jesus, Bart Ehrman says essential Christian beliefs are not affected by textual variants in the manuscript tradition of the New Testament. I don't know about you, but I find it ironic that after centuries of polemics against the biblical text, some Muslims are now saying something similar about the preservation of their own scripture. But when Shabir says this, The various readings do not change anything that uh, Muslims uh, believe and do not affect the practices uh, of Muslims in any significant uh, degree. Is he correct? I would argue Muslims need to be very cautious about these claims. Biblical text criticism has been around for centuries and is in its advanced stages. Quranic text criticism, however, is hardly in its infancy. We have yet to see a text critical apparatus, which would be a nice addition to, say, the 1924 standardized Quran, since it's been around for about a century now. So, while many Muslims may make claims similar to Christians, regarding the preservation of their scriptures, they haven't done the text critical work to prove them. It seems likely that the bounds of orthodoxy will continue to preclude such a project among many scholars in the Muslim world for the near future. Indeed, much work on the text of the Quran has been done by Western scholars in recent decades who are equally, if not more competent than their Muslim peers and less hampered by the limits Muslim tradition has imposed on critical examination of the Quran. Now, there are always Muslims who post comments on my videos talking about how the text of the Quran doesn't matter. The Quran has been perfectly preserved through memorization. Even after hearing Shabir Ali say this. Uh, so how do we make sense of all of this? We want to retrace the history of how these uh, manuscripts became divergent. How is it that we have a variety of uh, readings of the Quran and manuscripts to match? These copy pasters will continue to impress us with all of the stories about the miraculous, perfect memorization of the Quran. And in the process imply they don't care about the data. For everyone else interested in the topic, it will be fascinating to see if a more evidence-based understanding of the transmission of the Quran filters down to popular level Muslims and how these Muslims react when they find out that the data conflict with what they've been told about the perfect preservation of the Quran, every dot, every letter, every sound. Of course, this conflict of data and tradition is the problem the Muslim world is facing on multiple fronts not just with the preservation of the Quran. There are interesting days ahead.